Hello YouTube, Flight Sim Guy here. Uh, today we're doing something a little bit different. I am in Queensland, Australia, at an airport that I don't recall the name of. Uh, airport code is YHID, and as you can see, it's an airport out in the middle of nowhere with pretty much nothing. And the reason why I chose this airport is because I'm flying a new plane. Today we're gonna go over the Aerosoft Twin Otter. Yes, folks, we're going to be doing some bush flying. So this is going to be the first of a series of about four videos. And what we're going to do is take a deep dive into this particular add-on from Aerosoft and uh, talk about uh, bush flying. And we're going to go over the aircraft, uh, startup, checklist, characteristics, and whatnot. And we're going to do a quick flight from where we are over to an island just south of Papua New Guinea and for the next uh, couple of videos we're just going to be doing some bush flying all right so if you never heard of the, fr the phrase bush flying what it is essentially is uh, flying in and out of tiny airports and I wouldn't even call these airports they're like grass or dirt or gravel or you know uh, just remote airstrips and that's what this plane is good at um, twin otter also known as the, the Twatter. This one is uh, made by De Havilland. Um, it's still in production, but uh, it's been made by another company called Viking Aircraft. And as you can see, it's a high wing twin turboprop. And uh, this particular uh, kind of aircraft uh, doesn't go very fast, doesn't go very high. It's a non pressurized cabin. So we're looking at a ceiling of maybe. 10 to 12,000 feet can probably go higher than that but since it's non pressurized you don't want anyone passing out from hypoxia so we're talking low and slow here uh, primarily used for short hops getting people and cargo in and out of uh, remote locations and also interestingly this aircraft is used by the Air Force uh, jump team and all the people who do skydiving you just load up in there fly up to 10,000 feet and jump out um, this one here has uh, the traditional landing gear with the wheels. When you get this add-on, it also comes with um, skis. So you can uh, do takeoff and landing in uh, the Arctic and snowy areas. And it also comes with floats. So you can uh, do takeoff and landing on the water. All right, so let's do a quick walk around. As usual, it's an Airsoft product. So we're looking at top-notch, top quality here. I mean, this is good stuff. I got it on sale from FS Pilot Shop, or was it uh, Sim Market? I don't recall, but they had it on sale. And this has actually been in production at Aerosoft since like 2009. And this is the updated version. So it's like a version two. So it's pretty sweet, okay? Let me tell you, this is a really, really, really good aircraft. And um, it's uh, very, very easy to fly. Very easy to take off. Landing is a little bit tricky. You know, because you got to come in slow for those short airports or those short runways. And um, it handles great, but it's a little bit, uh, it's easy to fly, but you got to watch what you're doing with the engines. And we will go over that in a moment. So very, very detailed and very good modeling. Now, what I like to do when I uh, review a new aircraft, let's go ahead and go inside. And let's go ahead and go through the, the views. And when I mean the views, I mean the A key. So that's the uh, pilot. And there you have this view here, which is uh, the center console. And you have the co-pilot. And then you have the various overhead views for the avionics and the engines, or the engine controls. There you have the uh, test panel. We'll talk about the testing in a moment. Uh, center pedestal, and then you have the uh, the battery panel, and then you have that view right there. And then you have you also have a virtual uh, virtual cabin, which is pretty cool. In this case, this particular uh, aircraft carries cargo. Okay, and that's for your throttle. And now, let's go through the controls. And what I mean by that is what I like to do with these new aircraft, I hit shift and all the number keys to see what's available. 
Shift one, nothing. Shift two. All right, we're gonna go over this in a second. It's uh, it's like a pilot operating handbook. Has all the checklists and the configurations and whatnot. And then Shift three. This right here allows you instant access to all the various views. And it also has the checklist right there. You can toggle that on and off. You can also toggle the GPS on and off. And these are all the views again. And Shift three takes care of that. Close it here, close it here. Shift four toggles your GPS on and off and shift five. All right, that's it. All right, here are my chase, cam chase plane camera views. You got your pilot, you got your overhead for your engine start, and then you have your engine controls, and then you have all the uh, primary instruments, or your, uh, uh, say your avionics, or your controls and whatnot. Then you have your radios, and there's a little issue with the radios, I'll go over that in a second. And <laughs> uh, these are your instruments, but that flight control lock thing is in the way. I'll get rid of that in a second. And I put the camera for the window by the prop. And I want to say that's it. All right. So let's take a look here. Um, as you can see, the yoke is in the way. So what I had to do was uh, I created a uh, uh, chase plane view that puts this right here. Here you have your, uh, you got your ball, airspeed indicator, um, your nav radios, or your uh, OBS 1 and 2, this regular stock uh, FSX stuff, altitude, and you have your autopilot. This is actually your autopilot engage. Um, it doesn't say it, but this actually turns the autopilot on and off. Um, see here, here's your uh, heading, here's your course needle. And this is your ADF, and this is your OBS2. Vertical speed, and what do we got here? This looks like it's a uh, radio altimeter. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at these. Um, this stack of uh, dials here, one for each engine. You got your torque pressure. And this little red line is very important. And here you have your temperatures. And here you have your, I guess this is your, what's this? N1 and N2. What do we got here? Percent prop RPM, percent GG RPM. These two are very important. We'll go over that in a second. Got your fuel flow, oil pressure, oil temperature, and your fuel quantity. All right, pretty straightforward stuff here. Flight data recorder. Uh, this data recorder actually works. Once you turn it on, it uh, records flight parameters that you can uh, play back in a different file, just like a real-world flight data recorder to show you the specific uh, uh, metrics of all the engines and instruments during your phase of flight. Can't imagine why you use it, but it's there. This right here is your transponder. And then we have uh, battery uh, instruments here. Here you got your static vacuum uh, thing and what we got here we got the ADF you got your DME you got your nav 1 nav 2 and you have your GPS and here you have uh, some more uh, nav and com uh, switches all right let's look at the overhead panel we got a little airspeed uh, plate right there that's good let's start with this one here here's your battery master landing lights and your ignitions here you have your uh, fuel flow, which is your thrust. Here are your props and your fuel cutoff. And this is not simulated. And here you got your flaps. And over here, you have your de-icing systems. You got your lighting switches. You got your circuit breakers. These aren't modeled. And we have some more lights here. You got your bleed air and uh, your bus ties. Okay, and when you go over to the co-pilot side, I don't think I did one for the co-pilot. You have your usual uh, navigation or flight instruments over there. When I bought this out of the box, these instruments, they turned on, but they, the screens were blank. That's because the fonts were missing. I went ahead and I think I fixed it. I had to re, uh, 
I copied over the right font that was missing based on what my research on uh, Google uh, told me and I restarted the computer but I'm not sure if it works so we'll find out in a second. A few things to discuss about this Twin Otter. Um, this aircraft, the fuel tanks aren't in the wings. The fuel tanks is in the fuselage in the bottom. As a result, there's a complicated set of fuel pumps and whatnot to get fuel to the engines. It's important to know that because this aircraft simulates a lot of those activities and it's a big pain in the ass, to be totally honest. This aircraft, we know that FSX simulates icing. This aircraft takes it a, a step further. This add-on takes it a step further. They rewrote the the uh, the simulation of icing and now you all you've all seen that little graph that shows uh, conditions that can uh, cause icing well if this airplane is flying in those conditions it doesn't show the ice buildup on the aircraft but it simulates icing and what that means is if you're not careful your engines are going to cut out because you have icing on the air intake and you're going to stop flying because there's icing building up on the wings that said there is a sophisticated de-icing uh, instruments to get uh, take care of all the icing. So you have your de-icing boots, you have your bleed air, you have um, your pitot heats and whatnot. And we'll go over all that in a second. One more thing I'd like to talk about before we go, go into the, uh, the checklist and the engine start. All right, we talked about these instruments. Most turboprops, you can't just power them up, mash the throttle, to the firewall and fly. If you do that in this plane, after a couple of minutes, the engines are going to conk out on you or they're going to catch fire. So you have to be careful. This aircraft simulates a lot of failures common in uh, turboprops, such as excessive T5 temperature. If you get into the red zone, eventually your engines are going to fail on you. Ice ingestion. As I talked about, um, if icing conditions exist, Ice might build up near the engine uh, air intakes, which might break off and get inge ingested into the engines, thus causing a flame out. This simulates a flame out. Now, it doesn't actually show flames billowing from the engines, but your engines will shut off on you. Hot starts. Hot starts occur if fuel is introduced before you reach your uh, N2 RPM. And what happens then is if you try starting and the uh, turbines aren't spinning fast enough, you get fuel in here and then the engine doesn't start and you get an engine fire and then when you get the engine fire you hear this loud alarm and this thing lights up and then you have to go ahead and pull the fire extinguisher to turn off the alarm and put out the fire and then you can't play you can't fly anymore you have to restart or reload the aircraft so it simulates that and engine over torque if your torque instrument gets too high where is it right here I know we saw it earlier. If you get past this red line, after a couple of minutes, your engine's going to conk out on you. So you got to watch all of these things. Now, considering the fact that Aerosoft took the time and effort to simulate a lot of these advanced features in the aircraft, you would think the documentation would be nice and beefy. Well, you'd be wrong. For such a sophisticated add-on, there's not a lot of documentation. It's about maybe 50 pages max, broken up over four chapters. Not even that. And uh, the biggest one is a checklist. And let me tell you, man, the checklist on this plane, it is crazy long. Um, let's go ahead and talk about that. All right, so shift two. All right, let's go back to the beginning. Let's go ahead and call this a pilot operating uh, manual. A lot of good stuff is in here. You have your uh, pre-start. You have all your checklist items, you have your run-up and your performance tables. Uh, There's a lot of good stuff in here. Now, having said that, um, this one right here, configuration, let's go back right here. You can set up how you want the plane uh, to, to, to fly for you. So you can go ahead and configure your failures and icing. You can go ahead and uh, set it cold and dark. You can set it ready to fly. Um, default startup, let's go ahead and check that to cold and dark. And you can also open up all of these doors. All 
All right. Let's take a look. And I think this is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. This is definitely very cool. And let me go back inside. And, yeah, that's a, that's actually very awesome. Oh, look. I did, I did not see all of these circuit breakers here. Wow. Look at that. There's a whole bunch right here. That's another thing. Here's a door. And you, you don't notice it now. But when you're flying, your visibility back here, you know, when you're on downwind turning to base, you really can't see the runway. So. All right. Let's go ahead and button those up. Now, let's talk about the checklist. The checklist for this aircraft, if you're just going to take off and fly, it's you know no different from any other aircraft. Having said that, they've included all the starts or the uh, the checks that you need to do. All right, let me go through. I'm looking at the uh, the checklist document, and I'm going to read through all of them for you. You have. Your cross feed check for the fuel system. You have your em emergency pump check, the fuel system. You have your boost pump test, fuel system. And then you have your beta range check. You have your beta backup test. You have your prop overspeed test. You have your auto feather test. And you have your power lever micro switch test. You have your anti ice system test. And that's it. Now, let's go ahead and look at them in here. And I'm not going to do these in the flight. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start it up and skip all the tests. All right. So you have your cross feed check. That's all of this stuff right here. And I imagine you do all of this the first flight of the day. You have your prop feather check, beta range check, backup, beta backup test. Um, here we go. Yeah, that's your pre-start. We'll just go ahead and uh, click through these. You got your cross feed, emergency pump check, boost pump check. All of this stuff right here. Then you got your engine start. And then you have your prop feather check, beta range check, beta backup test. Propeller governor test, auto feather test, power lever micro switch. Anti-ice, and I think that's it. Everything else is just relatively straightforward. All right. Now, with regard to the checklist, the thing I like about this add-on, let's go ahead and bring it back up. When you go through your checks, um, when you left-click, okay, you don't have to just look at this and say, hey, you know, um, I'm going to go ahead and do it manually. All you have to do is right click on it and it will actually do the action for you. If you left click on each of these, it goes to the camera view for where the instrument is. All right. And then when you right click the fire handles, they're right here. When you right click, it does a check, but it also does the action right here. If you wanted to, what you could do is you could go through the twatter checklist, clicking all of these and it will actually do the action over here. And that's what I'm going to do to uh, light this thing up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the pre-start. I'm going to skip all of the checks. I'm just going to go ahead and go through with the, uh, the engine start. Hopefully, I can do the engine start without having to go through all of these checks. Since, uh, you know, it's uh, being... Yeah, there we go. I can do that one right there. All right. So, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go through all of this. To make sure I'm not missing anything. Nope. Oh, heard the de-icing switches off. Cabin lighting and signs. Anti-collision lights on. All right. Let's go ahead and close this. Let's go back here. Let's see if my thing works. Yes. There it goes. All right. So, as I said, when you buy this add-on, the instruments will come on right here, but the screens are going to be blank. What you need to do is go to your simulator uh, folder and do a search on quartz, Q-U-A-R-T-Z dot T-T-F. 
search for that file and when you find it make a copy and put it in your C Windows fonts folder and restart and that's, that's gonna fix that issue right there alright so what we're gonna do we're gonna go through the startup and we're gonna go ahead and take this for a quick flight alright now the battery is running don't wanna drain out the battery so let's get this thing going alright we went through this next we're not gonna do this we're not gonna do these checks let's do the engine start all right, prop levers. I'm gonna move mine full forward. All right, let's go ahead and check that. There we go. Power levels, idle. Boost pump switch, aft. Turn that on. There we go. Start switch, engine right. Let's go ahead and hit the start switch. That's right up here. And we're gonna give it gas. What the f <laughs> All right, so I have a fire. You can't see it, but I have a fire. So let's go ahead and do that. There goes the fire extinguisher. It doesn't simulate that, unfortunately. And now, in theory, I can't fly this plane. So what we're going to do is we are going to skip all of this crap and I'll see if I can uh, do a ready to fly. Nope. Set ready to fly. There we go. Okay, we still have a door open. Alright, there we go. Alright, we still have a door open, so let's go ahead and close that one. Alright, good to go. Okay, alright, so what do we need to look for? Gotta make sure we don't go over here. And we need to make sure that we stay within the green, the T5, and where we are, I don't think there's going to be any icing. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Okay. So as far as I can go, here's Australia. That's where I am right now. And where I need to go is and I didn't load the flight plan I'll just go ahead and put a GPS direct YBOI so let's go ahead and do that all right now this says ready to fly let's take a look do we have flaps no we don't so let's go ahead and give one notch of flaps that should be enough there we go and as far as flying this aircraft it's relatively straightforward let's go ahead and turn on the flight data recorder let's take it our fuel quantity we have full but uneven tanks. We're going to take it up to 10,000 feet. And since this is a bush plane, short field takeoff and landing. This thing can take off from our postage stamp. Because of that, and since it's a powerful turboprop, I'm going to take off from whatever runway I want. There's no tower here. Um, and there is no ATIS, so let's just go ahead and get going. A quick word about bush flying. We're going to be doing our tour in Papua New Guinea, all right? I bought uh, a Pacific Island add-on. I should have gotten Orbix, but I just went ahead and got what I could find on the internet. And this particular add-on, what they do, they've implemented um, all the dirt and grass airstrips in Papua New Guinea and they've added a few that does not exist in FSX all right which is good the issue is when you fly to these uh, okay, what am I doing okay I'm turning the wrong way the issue is when you fly to these airports in the real world 
the only way you can navigate apart from um, pallet edge and dead reckoning looking out the window the only instrument that you can really use is the ADF why because in a lot of these countries uh, VOR technology I guess is a little bit expensive but ADF is a lot cheaper they have good range and they work you know the non-directional beacons they work very well so what this developer did was for all the airport that they uh, modeled they went ahead and put an NDB beacon at the foot of the runway so that you can find it and that's the reason why it was important for me to get my ADF fixed now in this case we're doing a direct uh, we're doing a GPS direct so we're not going to be using the ADF uh, for this particular flight structure of some sort and all I'm going to do is get on the runway take off it's a short typical short field takeoff all right then once I get in the air I'll just uh, use the GPS get to where I'm going and I gotta watch my engines the last time I tried this my engines conked out because I wasn't paying attention to the gauges now that said in the configuration you can turn that off all right so what we're gonna do is and with most turbo props you don't mash the engines all the way to the firewall I'm gonna do it this time just so I can get in the air Once you're in the white zone right there, just go ahead and rotate. Okay, bring up the flaps. All right, so let's take a look at my engines. Right at the edge right there. I got Active Sky next going, by the way. It looks like I'm gonna be in the soup. Wow, nasty weather. All right, torque. I'm right at the, the, the line with the torque. There we go. All right, so I brought my engines back a little bit to keep me in that zone right there. I'm gaining altitude, 2,000 feet per minute. And the weather here is crappy. All right. All right, our temperature. We look good on the temperature. So we're in the green here. We're in the green here. All I need to do now is make sure I'm not building up ice. Now, this is uh, cloudy or foggy or whatever, and even though I'm in the tropics, icing can build up. So what I'm gonna do is go to my overhead and I'm gonna turn on intake anti-ice. Extend intake and the icing boots. Let's go ahead and turn it to auto. Uh, we can put it on slow. These just shake the ice off. All right, cool. All right, so now I need to be flying heading 352, which is not where I'm going. So 352, let's go ahead and come left. We're still climbing. Flight plan seems to have disappeared. And we're almost at uh, 5,000 feet. Now this plane cruises at about 150 knots. Um, uh, it doesn't go very fast, but it can carry a ton of weight and it can take off and land from anywhere. Let's see how we look on the outside. Pretty dreary day. All right, all right. Let's go ahead and straighten up. What I can do? Let's go ahead and come here. Let's go ahead and bring this here, and we're gonna do that and turn on heading. Now, that's how it knows. That's how you can tell when a specific autopilot instrument has been set. I'll keep heading until I get on course and then I'll turn it over to nav and as I get higher my airspeed goes down you also got to keep an eye on the instruments All right, T5 I'm over again I was 
right at the red line on T5. Yep, there it is right there. Alright. Still climbing at 1,000 feet per minute. And we've gotten over the bad weather. That's good. Got to keep an eye on the temperature. Also, these are turboprop engines. They don't react instantly. Torque pressure is way down. I'm using my fuel flow and my props. That's this and this to keep my instruments in check. And we're approaching our cruise altitude. And let's take a look. We are 69 miles away from our destination. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and start our descent. I'm going to take it down to 5,000 feet. Let's turn this back on. There we go. And yeah, this is easy flying, folks. Easy flying. Nose is coming down 500 feet per minute. I'm not finding, and the, uh, the instructions doesn't say anything about how to manage the vertical speed manually. I'm sorry, automatically with the autopilot. You're just going to have to do it manually. All right, let's take a look at these lights. Let's see what we got here. I don't have a camera set up for the lights. I'm gonna have to do it this way. Reset props. All right, let's take a look at my torque. There we go. I have the props full forward. And these lights are uh, very uh, accurately modeled also. So is the gauges. And uh, they've simulated a lot of good stuff here. But like I said, um, you just got to learn it yourself because the manuals are very skimpy. Uh, where is it? Yeah, here we go. You can go ahead and turn that on having a hard time seeing which I thought was pretty cool all right this is pretty cool this lighting is very good now I'm gonna try bush flying at night most of those small airports uh, forbid uh, any nighttime operation go ahead and turn that off don't need that whatever all right approaching 5,000 feet and we are at 25 miles all right we need to get down more 3,500. We'll keep coming down. Okay, what's our speed? Alright. Moving a little bit faster here. Alright, so we're coming up. Let's go ahead and zoom out. And I'm off course. My airport's on the other side of this island. Alright, let's go ahead and get on course. Oops, wrong one. See, here's a problem. But I guess you can do it that way. I'm gonna go ahead, and Nav. One four three eight Zulu weather wind one zero five at one two visibility one zero sky condition. Zero. All right, we're coming up on it. All right, there we go. All right, at this point, I can go ahead and turn the autopilot off do this. Alright. And I have the wheels. Alright. Alright, we've got 9 and 27. And uh, I guess I can do a straight in. Alright. Let's get the winds again. Yankee Hotel, India Delta Airport Information, Kilo 1438 Zulu Weather. One zero five at one two. All right. According to this, I can do a straight in. All right, and it's our runway nine. So here's my orientation. What I want to do is put this to here. All right. According to this, I am five miles out. All right. I'm going to turn this way. Let's 
see here. Alright. Airport's right over here. And it's at the edge of this uh, island. So what's my altitude? 2100 feet. Alright. Let's go ahead and slow down. Alright, I want to keep it right here. Let's trim up. go. And I can give it one notch of flaps. Don't hear much when the flaps go. To double check to make sure it does it. Okay. Now the maneuvering speed. I'm right in the arc for maneuvering speed right here. So let's go ahead and keep it there. Bring the engines back to life. Uh, elevation here. It's at the edge of this island, so it's probably at uh, sea level. Alright, there we are right there. Three miles. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in. Oops. There we go. There, perfect. Now what I'm going to do is, when I hit the coast, I'm just going to ride the coast in. one notch flaps. So we'll keep it here. See how we look on the outside. And there's a field. It's right over there somewhere. I'm just going to follow the coast in. Now that's the thing about bush flying. That's the thing about bush flying. You're not going to see the runway or see the airport until you're right on top of it. And this plane is perfect for that. Handles good, nice and slow. Alright, let's go ahead and make my turn. 700 feet. And we are two miles. Yeah. Right. Let's go ahead and lead off some altitude while I make my turn. According to this, I'm right on top of it. Could that be it? Yep, that's it right there. It's not much of an airport, is it? Alright off the gas, 900 feet, another notch of flaps, yeah, that's not much of an airport, <laughs> wow, all right, give it some gas, don't want to stall, and let's bring her in, now, when I looked at when I brought up the airport in FSX, it said that this airport was a part of uh, Australia, Queensland. But over here is Papua New Guinea. So and that's where I'm going to be doing all of my, uh, my tours. So what we're going to do is I'll leave the plane here, save the flight. And when we pick up the next flight, we'll go ahead and fly into one of those airports from that scenery package that I purchased. I don't remember the name of it. I'll go ahead and include it in the description below. Now the notch flaps. And um, we'll pick it up there. All right. All right, I'm on the edge of stalling. And I don't want to crash into that tree. And this is perfect bush flying, folks. This is perfect bush flying. 300 feet. Winds are 116, so I have a little bit of a crosswind here. That's the reason why I'm crabbing. Alright, there we go. don't need to use reverse thrust, just let the friction of the grass slow me down. That should be good. And I'm looking at the flat bag, I'm right on the runway. It's a very, very, very tiny runway, but... And there's no buildings here. 
example, I'll just park this by that tree. Flaps up. Now, another good thing about this aircraft, it simulates the surface condition that you're on. So when you're on grass, it takes a lot more torque, a lot more power in the engines to get rolling. This does a very good job of simulating that. Now, having said that, this is a turboprop engine. So, you know, this will take off on quicksand if it has to. Didn't realize this airport was as remote as it is, which is fine. It served its purpose. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and move it over here. And the power down procedure for this uh, plane is um, not unlike any other plane, not unlike any other uh, aircraft, all right? So what we're going to do, set of brakes, all you got to do is kill the gas. So I want to say it's right click, right click. And that's the fuel cut off. Goes ahead and turns everything off right there. Okay, doesn't wanna there we go. Bring the props back. And then it's just a matter of turning everything off. Can turn off the boost pumps. And uh just pop these off. Pop these off. Turn off the flight data recorder. There's a file in the file system. You can go ahead and copy it over. And there is a program. I don't recall if it's part of FSX or P3D. Um, but you can just go ahead and load the file up in there, play it back, and it shows all the details of the, fi the flight. Come over here and just start powering everything off. Didn't even use landing lights. Nobody needs to see me. And over here, just go ahead and power off all the stuff that you don't need. Now, I cheated at the beginning of this flight. I just did a, you know, ready to taxi, which I, you know, don't necessarily think that it's cheating per se. I mean, once you guys buy the, uh, the add-on, you can go through it yourself. If anything, it saves a bunch of time. You can just go ahead and turn all these off. Okay, what was that? All right, there's a, another light of some sort. There we go. And um, turn off that. And I want to say that's it. So, yeah, bush flying. Um, this is flying by the seat of your pants. I like it, especially in this plane. This aircraft, I highly recommend um not exactly sure why it got out with that uh, defect with the uh, the lights but i think i'll just go ahead and do a quick video and, and post that so that people can fix that issue and i think that's it um my next flight is going to be uh going over to Papua new guinea i'm not exactly sure what airport we'll go ahead and use a flat back for that the trial period for this thing is almost over so and I'll just go ahead and get it. And that's all I have for today. Hope you guys found this video useful. My name is Flightsome Guy. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.